computer interface here and also down on the left side of the machine. It has um, thermocouples as well as width adjusting uh, switch. <clears throat> it has a, um, a UPS on off switch, a lighting switch, and a computer control with an emergency stop here. Uh, the oven has two exhaust ports, one by the fluxer and one by the reflow zone. It has three um, uh, windows that can be lifted up. Main power on off switch is right here. It is a three phase machine that, um, uh, three phase, I believe close to uh, 100 amps. Uh, it has a port, a port access to the preheat zone. Uh, there's one here and there's three preheat zones, one, two, and three. Two of them are consolidated, I believe the zones one, uh, two, and three are consolidated. It has an access to the fluxer for calibration right through here. We just have a piece of cardboard in here for fluxer, um, a fluxer demonstration in a moment. Uh, the, uh, it also has a timer where you can set the oven to um, basically wake up and preheat the pot early in the morning so when you come uh, to run production, it's all ready to go for you and you don't have to wait that day. Okay. Um, the next glass panel is right up here. This is preheat zone two and three. And then the very last, the reflow zone, um, is right here. There is a, um, a removable solder, lead-free solder pot. This is a lead-free oven with uh, a, um, it's automated in, uh, removal and um, insertion. It's a two impeller system, as you can see with the titanium fingers right through here. Uh, it does have um, all of the temperature controls right here. And um, coming around this side, here's the output side of the oven. The safety tree, of course, the status tree. Now on the back side of the oven, there is also a a safety switch as well as a solder pot um, uh, insertion and removal. The solder pot of course can be removed and drained. Um, here are the two impellers and there's access from this side as well. Each of these doors is functioning and does work. Here's a view from uh, the back of the machine. Uh, here is the access to the fluxer pot. There's one pot for flux, one for alcohol for cleaning. And we'll typically, when we use the machine, we'll clean it with alcohol and with a, a food coloring so we know that the alcohol has made it through and the flux has been removed. Uh, this has worked for us well. <clears throat> it does have a UPS right down below here. It has a, an accessible tray here. Um, it has another tray down here by the bottom of the fluxer. It has another filter right up above the uh, above the, the fluxer. It has uh, an, a trap door which gives you access to all the pneumatic controls that control the <clears throat> the fluxer pressure and uh, the speed and those sort of things. And coming right, right back around this side, we have the uh, pneumatic input, and um, and that's pretty much it. So while I have this up, I'll just go through the different controls that we have in the software, how well this, um, how visible this is, but there is a control panel. Um, this, this is all software and uh, controller controlled. Uh, there's a config screen that will allow you to purge the fluxer, which is happening right now. It's going back and forth, just spraying alcohol through. We're gonna turn that off here. You can set up the, um, there's controls for a preheat 1, preheat 2, and preheat 3. Uh, there's um, two different uh, fingers, one for wave and one for chip wave. There's a finger cleaner. Uh, there's a conveyor on and off right here. When the uh, conveyor comes on, it's represented by moving fingers in the screen, as well as you can see the moving fingers down here on either side. There is a feed port for the board right here on this side, as well as, let's see, let's go ahead and turn this on. There's a solder pot on off command. Uh, <clears throat> there's a wave on and off, which I'm just going to turn the wave on here. 
which will turn on the impellers to shoot wave, the wave through. Now I didn't turn on the light. You can see that the wave is flowing. Um, should have probably turned on the light. We'll do that next time. Let me run a board through. Okay, we'll turn the wave off. Now there's also a, there's an exhaust uh, control right here. That can be to turn on and off the exhaust fan. Everything is functioning on the oven currently. Um, let's see here. And that pretty much will do it. We'll go ahead and set up a board and we'll run that through next. Okay, continuing with our demonstration of the Dectech uh, uh, 450 lead free wave solder. Just a couple other features quickly with the software. As you can see right now, the, uh, the machine is up in full running mode with all three preheat zones on. The solder pot is on. The, um, the, um, obviously, the main wave is on. The conveyor is on. Uh, this is all being represented graphically on the screen by moving fingers and running fans in the preheat zones. Um, the software allows you um, a couple different configurations and also under the parameters here there's different um, telemetry information about uh, preheat zones and the different um, temperatures within each zone here and um, as well as the solder pot you can look at the uh, regulation of the solder pot at 250 degrees Celsius and then the conveyor speed is also graphically represented here so all these things are represented under the set parameters screen here. So now, now that everything's running, what I'm going to do is uh, demonstrate how we uh, place the board in the oven. And the board, of course, is going to be placed right in the conveyor feed right here. It has a stiffener on the front. Okay, so the, the panel with stiffener is placed. And um, as it as it feeds in, there is a detector right there that detects the entry of the board. And when that's detected, uh, that lets the, um, sometimes the light will mess up the detection, so I don't want to flash the flashlight on it. The flexor won't start correctly if the uh, optical detector is interfered with, which I think I actually did uh, by mistake by flashing the flashlight on it. So um, yeah, the flexor is, it thinks the board is getting a little later because it was, um, and there it goes. Actually, you know, I did not. The uh, flexor started at the correct time. So the board is flux now. Actually, we only have alcohol in there because we didn't want to have to clean it again. Now, the board, the panel is graphically represented right here. And, um, showing it going into preheat zone one. And now I have a light turned on, so we have the board went through the fluxer here, and was sprayed. Preheat zone one is here. Preheat zone two is here. And if we go back to the, back to the monitor here, you can see where the, uh, the board is making it through preheat zone two. So uh, you can pretty much feed the boards through it. In our experience, we just would feed one after the other and it seemed to do fine. There's a couple features with this where the, the, the wave will turn on and off. If you have very low duty cycle and you want to generate less dross, you can let this run. Um, you don't have to let the wave run all the time. The wave can turn itself on and off automatically depending on the timing. Now right now we're going to go over to the, um, to the wave area and here comes the board. So the board is making its way to the wave. And it's feeding through the wave. Now, we, like I said, we have, we have alcohol rather than flux and sprayed on the board because we did want to avoid cleanup and to keep the, all the sprayers and nozzles in good repair. Okay, the board is made it through the wave. And um, now there's a cooler that flows on it. And we come around here. To where the um, the panel is going to make it out this end. 
Uh, there are many adjustments you can make. Uh, you can see the hydraulic here on the height of the machine. And it's going to be a little hot, but I'll try to take it out of here anyway. It will slide right out. And um, there you have it.